thing I'm going to say, like it doesn't start like this. Obviously, when I start, I'll have a load of twin nerfs coming out the board. Now, I I think about where the circuits are going to go first. First thing I'll do is I'll write down. It could just be on the, on the lid of the new DB you've got, like to get the old wireless cardboard out, and you'd be scribbling down all the circuits. And then I try and divide it up because obviously you know how the how the old how you're supposed to split the two RCDs for nuisance tripping. So you're supposed to put one ring on one and one ring on another. So put put like maybe the downstairs ring on one RCD and the upstairs light on the same RCD. So if you, you lose your lights, you can plug a lamp in, pretty much. Maybe put the cooker, if the cooker's got a plug socket on it, put that on one RCD, but put the kitchen ring on the other one. You know, you lose the kitchen ring, you still plug your fridge in. So you sort of have a little think about it first. And what I'll do is you've got two holes in the back here. So on this one, I'd have probably brought Whatever's on this RCD, out of this hole. Whatever's on that RCD, out of this hole. Now, um, I'll, you know, I might actually just take a minute just to sort of mix it up a little bit, because I notice I've got a 40 here, which I imagine is probably dedicated for this piece of 10mm uh, twin and CPC cable. So I'm gonna probably move him onto this side. And I'm gonna show you another little thing I do as well. You've probably noticed, I don't know if it's a regulation or not, but you always start with the highest MCB next to the RCD, and you work your way along the bus bar to the smallest MCB. A question that's come up a lot in the past is, why do I not put everything in order? Why, why do I not sort of, when I say in order, why do I not leave the last two as blanks and just sort of continue my circuits along? So if I had three circuits, maybe use these three. If, if the last one was a lighting circuit, maybe have that as a six and whatever I've got left over, put in these two. I'll, for instance, I'll give you an example with that. That would probably be like maybe a cooker circuit. That would be a ring circuit. These two might be blank and I'd probably put my lights here. So these two I wouldn't use. And people say, why do you do that? Well, I'll tell you why I do that. Because these are 32s, that's a six. Give me a circuit, like a typical, an, an extra, one day, five years down the line, something new comes out, somebody wants something, give me a circuit. Garage circuit, 16, Garage circuit, 16 amp. It'll go in the middle. It's, it's still in order, isn't it? Could be a lighting circuit, well, I'll stick it next to this lighting circuit. Could be a 32, I'll stick it next to that 32. It's in order. If I just stuck them like that, and a guy comes along to do an installation, like for, I don't know, a cooker, maybe someone's got like a, another oven going in, his 32 would end up after the six, unless he decides to move it all around, and then he's gonna have to do another certificate for the circuit he's moved. So it just makes sense in my head. If you had a slightly bigger one, I'd probably have me 32s, miss, miss one, maybe me, me 20s and me 16s, miss one and I'll put my sixes at the end. And it just future proofs it for the next guy. It's quite easy, you've got your blanks, you can put your next circuit in, it makes sense. Another thing I like to do as well, I don't like those plates you put on the covers. I know people sort of argue if it should be plastic or it should be metal and all that lot. I, I don't use them at all, because you take that off and they'll slide around. I'd rather just use the fixed module that goes in there. By doing that as well, when you do terminate these onto your bus bar, they're the right distance apart. Otherwise you're guessing. When you terminate that up, you're guessing, and then you put the lid on and nothing really, it doesn't fit on very well, does it? You sort of have to try and squeeze those, those blanks in. So, uh, I'm just wanna so this is a, what I'm gonna do then as this is actually I'll say it probably doesn't make any difference which one is close to that because it's not a bus bar feeding the uh the RCDs to the main switch. So I suppose I thought we can stay there. So what I'll probably do is I'll just move the 10 over to this side. We probably did it, Luke, to make it a right pig for the learners, is probably why we did it like What, just to make them think about it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So if we can make it difficult for them, we would have done so. You're gonna sort that problem yeah. for us, let's put I think the hardest problem would be not swearing on them. Trying to get his Temu in here. Maybe I should have just moved the breaker. With the old Wilex boards, I don't know if this is one of them, one thing you've got to bear in mind, put your head underneath when you're doing the bus bar up. Because it's quite easy to do the screw up. I think Wilex has actually changed their breakers now, being, being honest. I think they've changed the way that they're, they're terminated on the bus bar. But on the old ones, it was quite easy to miss the pin on the bus bar. Have you seen that before? Yeah. I've seen a few boards melt because of that, especially on our 40 amp shower circuits. Get in there. Alright, there we go. I think I've brought one with him. In reality, Gaz, this has got a piece of timber inside that grommet strip. Would that have been an issue for obviously the uh, Amendment 3 boards? What would it have been mounted on a wooden structure? Yeah. 
We're trying to, yeah, you probably would be arguing that we'd be filling the hole at the back of it with a yeah. uh, non corrosive for PVC fire retardant barrier. But of course, we've got a lot of new installations now, timber framed, a lot of wood now out there, and we're not always going to get the chance to screw it to a block or brick wall. No. Um, it's containing the fire within the enclosure for the maximum amount of time. We're not expecting it to hold it in there for three or four hours. Um, it's that heat generated and the fire obviously contained for... I believe Wilex actually do a, a bit that goes on the back of the board. I've not installed one yet, but I've, I've been told it does exist. You can actually buy something that you mount the board on. I'm sure if anyone's out there on YouTube world and have got to this bit in the video, they will be kicking in in the comments <laughs> with uh, what we should have done there, Luke. All right, do you know what? I'll do something else on this, and that is I, I take this all off. I like why that's you only have to loosen it off. There's no point making it more difficult than it has to be. So once you take this out and you have a look at it, I feel more I'm doing this. It's better than people asking me questions. Look at that now. That's a lot easier, isn't it? I'm trying to work around all those breakers. Now, if you can imagine, generally these are all covered in an, another piece of uh, sleeving. It's got the grey sleeving on it. Sleeving, sheath, insulation. It's the insulation, isn't it? All fingers and thumbs. Mechanical protection. Mechanical we'll protection. That's it, yeah. Twin and CPC, not twin and earth. Definitely not twin and earth. <laughs> twin and what? As I say to them, don't go to electrical wholesalers and ask for PVC, PVC, twin and CPC cable when they finish laughing at you saying, does that Gary <laughs> still work at that college in Corby? Yeah, they're ripping you. All right, so it's not, not, you're not in this sort of perfect scenario. It's, it's normally a bit mixed match. If, and what, what I would normally have is I'd have everything written on there. I'd have my piece of cardboard with all my circuits on. And so what I'd have to do one at a time, I'd have to start stripping them back. But when I strip them back, obviously I lose my labeling. So I'd have to make sure I still know what does what. On my cardboard, like you've probably seen the videos, I, even though it's probably in the description of what I've done, I will, um, it, it looks like I'm just making it up because there's, there's nothing written on them, but there actually is. What I do is because I've written it on the cardboard, I actually associate everything with a circuit. I've already worked out where they're going. So I associate it with a circuit. Now I'll tally, I'll do a tally mark on the cables, but I'll be honest, I'm not a massive fan of Talia because I see some people and they've got like circuit 17 and you're sitting there thinking, how are you going to count 17 ticks? It's so easy to get the wrong one, you'll probably get two legs of a ring wrong or you end up with like another circuit 17 and you're thinking, hang on a second, I've terminated circuit 17, where's this one go? One of those legs must be wrong. So the way I do it is I'll strip it off and I'll do a tally mark only on the phase. So, but when I tally it, I don't just put all the lines side by side. On this, I've got a, what's the DB? I've got a five plus five here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a ring at the top, which is the 32. So say it's my ring there. As it's, it's gonna be circuit one, so that'd be quite easy actually, it'd just be one tick. Let me do this one actually, cause it'd be harder. Let me do a lighting circuit on this side of the, of the board. So let's say this is gonna be circuit 10. I'll do, one, two, three, four, five. Leave a gap. One, two, three, four, five. If it was a six plus six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Leave a gap, one, two, three, four, five, six. I know, I can look at it, sorry, well, I don't even have to count it. I can, I can look at six lots on a, on a piece of cable and know exactly where it's going. So I know straight away it's 10. So that's, that's how I would wire that. So in here, so this is my ring. I've got one on there. I've got one on there. And then what I do, with my neutral and my earth, well, with everything, I would just get my earth cable and I'll just put a quick twist around it like that. I'll get this one out. I'll put a quick twist around it like that. That's, I know what these are. This is how I do it. It doesn't mean it's the right way of doing it. It's just how I've sort of taught myself over, uh, over the years. All right, so I've just done that one wrong. All right, so I'm gonna make this one here a radial. I'm gonna make him circuit three, two, three. Sticking to go. And I'm gonna have obviously two lighting circuits by the looks of it. Which does work out because I've got two sixes, so that's all right. So I'd have a, a four and a five. Oh, that's a neutral. One, two, three, four. Wrap the CPC around it. I mean, in a perfect world, if you had all the time in the world, you could probably get some little sticky labels or do what you want, but if you're under the clock, 
one, two, three, four, five. It started off like a mess to begin with, didn't it? It's, it's slowly getting neater. Do you know what? It's, it's going to be circuit six, isn't it? There's, there's no getting this confused with anything. Leave a gap in one. Now, we've got a six mil here. It's obviously going to be on a 32, and I, I could always say there was a ring circuit that was a 32 as well. So you could say, well, they're both 32, which one do you put first? It, the, this, the six mil is a slightly larger cable, so I'd probably put that first all the time. And this will be circuit seven. One, two, three, four, five, and then two. Uh, where's that? Is that two, five? It'll have to be a radial. Da, 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 da. That was seven, so it's have to be eight. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm doing the neutral. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Was it just say seven? Was it six, seven, eight? It'll have to be circuit eight. And then finally, this will be the very last one. I've already labelled them. I'll stick them together. So it, it was a mess. And now it's tidied itself back up again. Well, hang on a sec. I've got a straggler. And I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Because I've used up all my breakers. I suppose I could stick him, I'll, I'll put both the radials together in a 20. And the radial circuit is circuit 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight. All right. Put the pen away now. Now, because my CPC is the thing that's holding everything together, the very first thing I'll do with my neutrals, because what I can do now is I'll, I'll do my ring circuit first. So was that circuit one, circuit, so these two here, I could take my neutrals out. My live is still attached to my CPC. So there's my neutrals, and everything's still together there. I will, you know, there's no right or wrong way of dressing the board. And I'll be honest, every time I do a board, it's probably different from the last time. It depends where the cables come in. So I'll try and weigh it up, and I think what's going to sort of make them crisscross the least. So looking at this, I think it'd be quite nice if everything, if I can get all the neutrals to come this way, I'll probably get all the earths to go that way. So I'm gonna probably gonna bring everything up like that, back of the board, so it doesn't get in the way of my uh, tails when they eventually come in. This is gonna be circuit one, so I'll bring him round. I say it's gonna have to cross over the. I think I ain't got a choice, have I? Once you cut him, it's too late to go back, isn't it? All right. Should we do something like that? So I'll probably bring him to about there. No going back now. Now, uh, I like these cutters. I know a lot of people don't like side cutters. Some people are took, uh, for them and some people are against. Do you, I think, Gary, you use a knife, don't you? Do you use them on the, even on the uh, on this as well? Do you just use it on the insulation? No, we have. Chief. We have to use a knife just for them, them basic skills because when they come to college, if you try and use them a side cut, is what they end up doing is pressing too hard and yeah. slipping it completely off. So it becomes a bit tricky. I, I think we all know as well how someone came up with that idea because recently I had one that did six more as well, even though it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> all right. Now, the great thing as well about these cutters is it allows you. So stick that in there, give it a squeeze, that comes out really nice. There's my knuckles. This is a Wilex board and Gary was nice enough to let me know that on a Wilex board the torque setting for the earth neutral bar is going to be 1.7. So I'm going to stick that in there. Try and get all the copper in. And when it reaches the right torque set in, it should click. Should do, anyway. There you go. If I don't break the neutral bar. 
There you go, and that's going to be my guide now for all the other cables. So that's one neutral done. My next cable is going to be circuit free by the looks of it. Bring him up, follow it along, bring him over. There's circuit free there. I'm going to want to strip it about there, so I'm going to add about 10 mil on it. So far, so good. That's two. Right in circuit. What we got here? We've got a five, so this must be a four, which is. Hopefully, I'm not going against anything Gary's taught you in previous classes. <laughs> I don't know everything, unfortunately. I sort of. I was obviously taught from an electrician who may have taught me the right way, may not have taught me the right way, I don't know. But um, unfortunately, when you're an apprentice, you kind of take what your electrician takes as gospel. You don't always question it. So I've probably got a few bad habits that I'm not even aware of. So what we'll do for us is once um, Luke's got his neutrals in, so you can actually see it, we'll rotate ourselves into position so you can have a real good close-up look of actually the physical part of the neutrals um, as and when they're connected. You can see from the big screen how neat they are at the moment, can you? So look at how fantastic that's looking. We I'll say, be honest, we, it's not my neatest one. <laughs> we said, didn't we, when we take a consumer yeah. cover off, it's the opportunity to say, wow, which electrician done this? This looks fantastic. I find when you do an EICR as well, you you get a rough idea. I mean, it's probably not the right thing you should be doing, but I can sort of judge what the rest of the installation is going to be like from looking at the consumer unit. Just things like have they used a grommet? Have, have they sort of gone over you know, above and beyond what they needed to do in order to make the board look neat? Knowing that no one was ever going to see it. I mean, you might put like 10 years to the next inspection date on it. So no one's probably going to see it for 10 years, but if you've gone to the effort of making it look nice, you're thinking, well, do you know what? Everything probably is running zone. Everything probably does have a grommet in the back of the box. Maybe all the metallic switches have been like um, connected to the back of the box or to the back of the switch. And you just, I mean, it's, it's still assumption which you should never take, but I just feel a lot better when you... Look at my hand, are they shaking? Yeah, they are. I don't know if that's the coffee or if I'm just really nervous. <laughs> I think I've had about four coffees this morning. All right, I shouldn't really be using those cutters for this. This, I believe, is a one mil. I do not have, let me do that again, because it's not very good. And a classic case there, learners, yeah? He's done a termination, not happy with it. That termination could be there for the next 50 years. It takes another, what, 30 seconds to replace it for a termination that will last for 50 years. So we just change it, yeah? It ain't gonna be there for 50 years. They'll, they'll bring out a new device like SPDs and that, but before then it'll be a new board. <laughs> I had a customer recently, I gave him a, uh, a quote for rectifying all his code one and code twos. And I said to him, uh, you know, if we change the board, it would actually coincidentally, it would fix a lot of them already. Because a lot of the, the things in the previous board was a uh, poor fire rate. And when I say poor fire rate, and it was um, it was done very bad. It was, there wasn't a lot of the back of the board left. <laughs> it was on a piece of timber. And I uh, said, so, you know, I think we should really rectify that. I think, that, I think that was a code one or two, actually. It was just um, one of the things that, I think that's it. The board would, would have rectified the ones, the twos and the threes. Whereas if we'd have done the ones and twos, it would have been quite a lot of work. You could always purchase Code Breaker 2. I've got it. Available oh, at all good wholesalers. Oh, Gary, I should have brought it for you to sign. What, was that I've got my 7601 in the van. You can sign that. Is it because I'm one of the, uh, one of the contributing factors? I saw factors? that in there. Yeah. yeah, I saw that in there. All right, so that's the neutrals on that side done. Well, that'll be fair. It's not, it's not looking beautiful under there, but I don't think you lot can tell. 
and the uh, old grommet strips falling out as well. You lot fits in there thinking he's only done one side of the ball, we're going to be all day. Right. I hate it when I start a board and there's always one cable that's too short. Oh, you've ruined it. You've ruined the board. I think we'll be alright on this. He says. These are just radials. And I think I was going to share a radial because all I've got on this side of the board is a 20. So let's take that neutral out. Let's take that neutral out. <laughs> it's, I always love when you're doing this and there's a customer watching. They're going, how do you know where all the wires go? Because it always starts off like an absolute mess. I always go with the Once the board's off and on the floor and all the cables are hanging there and they look at you and yeah. I always turn to them and say, and where do they go? Did you remember? <laughs> And then when you hand your invoice to them, they're a lot keener to see that Wi-Fi come back on. So I always like that moment. When I first started, everyone used to just wear jeans to work. Like, People having uniforms and embroidery shops wasn't that common. And like, trying to have all these tools in a pair of jeans wasn't very easy. It's, it's fantastic now these like, little flappy pockets are around. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, bro embroidery and logos and, and <laughs> you know, false advertising on shirts. I think yeah. you should just keep it nice and simple. That's it. Have you still got that cup for me? You will be getting your mug later on, yes. <laughs> Alright, let's just pretend that clicked. So the head of the screw is a little bit worn. Do you have a uh, fault finding rig? Yes. Did you get my tweet? You're going to take on Ryan Dempsey at fault finding two simultaneous rigs with simultaneously the same faults, is that true? Do you know what, Dad? If you did the same faults, wouldn't you just, you'd know, wouldn't you? Unless you... Well, who found it first? That's Unless it. you just didn't video them doing the fault finding and then you just put the time on it. We've actually got two identical rigs. You could be side by side oh, at I the see. same time. Oh, cool. So Blimey, we that get, would be... That would be good. So we could, be we could say the customer's getting a tingle off the water pipe, first okay. one to find the fault. You know, would, like it, would it be like sort of like open circuit, closed circuit type faults, or would I be sitting there trying to test a ring and seeing if things are within 0 0.05 and doing a figure of eights and... No, no, we're, we're more at... Yeah, the, cu the customer will tell you what they believe <laughs> the problem is. If we let the learners at this stage, once you sort your CPs out, we'll let the learners in to have a, little, a look at those neutrals, I think. Sure. I'll, do you know what? I'm going to be honest, I'm actually quite embarrassed. This is my nearest job. Anyone would think loads of people are watching me. No, just the whole of YouTube. Yeah, just the whole of YouTube. All right, let me try and push a little bit more slack up there. Now, it's gonna, I've got to bear in mind, the fact I've got to get some towels through here eventually. And uh, I was sort of governed by the length that was already on the tails, although saying I could probably pull a bit more down, can I, if I? I'm just gonna shorten that a little bit, because even though the whole bar's made out of brass or copper, or whatever it is, so the chance of getting a shock off of it isn't gonna make any difference. It would, uh, it would be nice. There. 
not my neatest board, but I think the idea is there. Fantastic. First neutral's done then, folks. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Circuit protective conductors. Is that right, Luke? We are indeed. So I've still got my labelling on my, um, you call them line conductors, isn't it? On your line conductors. Um, so I can, I can identify my earth cables. Once I remove them, I will still know where my, my line conductors go because they've still got the markings on. They're going to be the very last ones I do. Now I'm going to obviously start again at terminal one, which I believe I can see was a ring. So there's one of them and there's another. So I'm going to pull my, separate my earths and my lives. Sorry, the lines. Will they be the CPCs, Luke? My CPCs, yes, yeah, sorry. What's on earth? Isn't that the family name that has lots of family members, such as the CPC, the protective bonding conductor, the earthing conductor? <laughs> it is indeed. Um, Gary supplied me some earth sleeving. This is two mil earth sleeving, isn't it? Now, I've made a mistake in the past of CPC buying- CPC sleeving. C CPC sleeving. I'm gonna make this a lot, I? there's gonna be a lot of editing. Just, just beep it like I'm swearing. Um, so this CPC sleeving, I believe that is two mil. I bought that, that recently. A little niggly thing. I, I hate when people use sleeving, which is too big, because it, it just falls off all the time. When you're doing things like downlights, and if anyone that's done a downlight, you'll, you'll realize you, you don't have a lot of sleeving over the CPC. It's just a very short piece you stick on there, and it tends to fall off a hell of a lot if it's too big. Now, it says two mil when you, when you purchase this, but it, it can quite easily fit over a piece of 2.5. So I can imagine, I can only imagine it's not a cross-sectional area. It must just be like the diameter of the, of the cable, of the um, sleeving. Okay, so I'm gonna start whacking this on. I'll tell you what, with a ring, it's slightly different. It's a little bit more wastage because I like to do them both. I'm not looking forward to sleeving that. 10 mil. All right, now I'm gonna go this way with it. So I'm gonna crisscross, but because I've done all the neutrals first, I'm not gonna be crossing an earth, crossing a neutral, crossing an earth, crossing a neutral. I'm only gonna cross all these once. All my earths are gonna only go over this once. You probably can't see it on the camera. So bring them up, bring them all right up to the corner, spin them round. And all right, that's me bond connections. Do you know what? I'm gonna keep it to its full length. So I'll make them the same length here. All right. Kill two birds with one stone and do that. Unfortunately, because these are one mil, my cutters don't fold them over very well. Terminal one. It's the same torque as the neutral bar, so let it click. Or not. I'm just gonna pretend it clicked. I don't wanna I think these have been undone and done up a few too many times and so obviously the head's burned off. All right, next circuit is gonna be one 2.5 radial. So let me try and find a 2.5 all by himself. And yep, that is terminal three. So I'll nick the CPC off of it. I don't want it, I don't want it to cross over, so I'll get it out nice and neatly. Straighten that bit up. Little trick is if it's a little bit burning, if you get a screw top and do that, it strains out. I like that, that was good. Little Thank trick you. There. Got loads of things like that up my sleeve, don't you worry. <laughs> Any reason why you didn't wear shorts today? Can you explain why? Uh, I don't think I've got the legs for it anymore, Gary. I've had too many uh, big mat mills. That's a little bit shorter than I hoped, but let's see if I can make him work. Besides, I want you guys to watch what I'm doing and not look at my legs. Do you know what? I used to be a bit of a gym freak, and uh, in the last six months, I've uh, <laughs> really eaten way too many McDonald meals. I can't remember the last time I went to the gym.
All right, then we've got terminal four, which is this one. Take him out. When it's one cable, you can sort of rescue a bit more sleeving because you can get it into position and then just strip back the bit you need. All right, bring them up, bring them round. Saying that, I think they're all going to do max length. They're fine to get over there. Never thought I'd ever be doing this. I always moan when there's that customer watching you do a fuse board. <laughs> now I'm in a room full of people. <laughs> what are we talking? 35 people watching you? Yeah. No pressure. All right. It's not as neat at the back of the board as I'd like, but the, I think you kind of get the idea. Uh, da -da 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 -da. One more CPC for that side of the board. Take the line out. Make sure it doesn't cross over the line. If you lot ever do any uh, data or telephone cabling, you have to punch down into a plug. Doing that with the screwdriver does help actually, trying to get all those cables untwisted. Bring them up, bring them round. Bring them up to terminal five. When I was an apprentice, there were some really stupid things that you worry about. And one of them I remember when I was doing sockets, which was one of the first things I was given to do was terminate a few sockets. And it was just, I just couldn't work out how much to strip off. You don't really think about it now. It's just like, it's like clutch control in a car. You just sort of, it's just second nature after a while. I remember another thing when I terminated my very first light fitting. I knew how to do it and my electrician had given it to me to do. And all the times I'd watched him, he'd be sitting there chatting away to me and we'd have a good old laugh and we'd be chatting and I'd just be passing him tools. And the, the idea was I sort of had to try and think of what he wanted next and I'd get it ready for him. And then the day came and he let me do a light fitting and I couldn't talk to him and do it at the same time. And I just couldn't work out how he could talk and terminate stuff. And uh, it just, you know, it's, it's just mad that, you know, I'm doing a fuse board now, I'm chatting to a class of 30 saying kids. <laughs> Probably a bit tight isn't it? And we can appreciate that it's absolutely deadly silent in there because everybody's yeah. enthralled with what you're doing, Luke. So, you know, I mean, this would not be my normal classroom if I had 30 odd people in there. We would be making a small amount of noise, one would suggest. On the other side now, so it'll be terminal six. Gary, would you attempt to bend that over that, what is that, four mil CPC? What we always say is, is gauge it against the size of the hole. So if the hole um, is gonna be um, better facilitated by doubled over termination, then we'd double it over. But again, it's a, it's a judgment call. So if you've gone singled in there, then yeah, that would be fine uh, as well. Holes nowadays, I find in the, the time I've been out of industry and where we are now, especially in the ceiling rows and pendants, them holes are a lot smaller for the loop switching line and neutral yeah. than they ever were before. What's your opinion on um, feeding the switches rather than you know free play? 
Yep, yeah, we, uh, there's videos on my channel, GSH Electrical, of course. Um, yeah. Just sort of get the cheap plug in. The, yeah, there's, there's both. So I believe if you've got um, numerous downlighters, let's go with feeding the switch. It's not just downlights anymore, though, is it? I mean, yeah, a you... lot of electricians use it really three plate in the switch. Yeah. Well, we sort of in the day and age now where you know, the internet's around and it's quite easy for a customer to go out and get himself a light from, from John Lewis or Ikea and stuff like that. And they'll normally turn up, and I don't know if you've seen the back of an Ikea light, but it's definitely not free plate. Okay. And uh, sometimes there's not even enough room to get all the cables in there. There might be like a very small 16 mil grommet. There's no chance in hell you're going to get three twin and earths and twin and CPCs in there. <laughs> Am I right in th thinking that some of the early retrofit um, sort of app hand controlled light switches needed a neutral app, the actual switch themselves? <laughs> Oh, I know what you're saying. All the Wi-Fi stuff and yeah, that there was a sort of a. I'm you're going right, back a yeah. few years, so you're again right. there was a big push to just drop a neutral down. Uh, some some of them, I think before the LED came out, you could actually use because going through a bulb, uh, you sorry, could almost sorry, get sorry, a neutral. Sorry, sorry, Luke, we we don't understand what a bulb is, but if I just <laughs> lamp. Yeah, there you go, lamp. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm struggling <laughs> trying not to say uh, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was actually a bit of a pull on the switch line, so that was enough to almost use it as a neutral in some of the old lights. Okay. But because of LEDs, they don't have a lot of load on them. That doesn't always work. You end up with just the LEDs flickering like a good one. Um, do you know what? I'm actually looking at what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sharing this, aren't I? It's going to be two radials. No, it's not. I'm doing the six mil. I'm doing the six mil. Sorry, ignore me, guys. Okay. And he's the next terminal along. Terminal seven. But yeah, I'll tell you what I find as well that feeding the switch, and if you buy Hager by the way, Hager has now got a neutral terminal in the back of the switch. So that makes things a little bit easier. It's almost like a double pole switch. Um, well, it would be nice if you see in the back of a plastic switch, if one day they sort of copied what the sockets do and maybe put like, like an earth terminal which connected to the 3.5s, that would be nice. Well, big debate in it, can you leave connectors floating in the back of the box. Well, you can't, can you? No. But you can do Wagos though, can't you? Yeah, so, yeah, the maintenance free one. So, again, if they, you know, I said, if they start designing it so there was an extra terminal for neutrals, then obviously that would help us as we evolve it. Exactly, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I love about a neutral. If you're a guy that works on his own and you go to someone's house and they've just got chandeliers galore, glass, and they, you know, they weigh a bit, and just, just a lot of light things that would be quite hard to hang down on your own and you're doing a bit of fault finding. I'm not saying don't hang them down, but it's a lot easier to go around and hang off a load of light switches than it is to go around and hang off every single light trying to find a fault. So that's one perk of feeding the switches now. If someone does have an issue on their lighting circuit, every cable you possibly need is going to be in the back of the switch. And with the evolution of actually uh, switches that don't actually need to be wired into the light fins that we're yeah. going to probably find that wired switches will be a thing of the past, won't they? Exactly. The only downside of that I think, is technology moves so quickly that I've found you'll install a system and the day something goes wrong with it and you come to repair, that part isn't always available. But I can't... It's, it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. Uh, technology, isn't it? It's all moving on. It's nice to have all these things available. Yeah, I can't wait for that though. So when we get into college and so we're going to be wiring up a lighting circuit, let's yeah. just, uh, just feed a cable to it and then screw the switches any way you like on the board. There you go, it works. So fantastic. You know, I've always said, why do you have to feed, why do you have to put all this into breakers? Why can't you just have some sort of phase terminal, an earth terminal, a neutral terminal, all one to whatever the number is. And as you click the breakers in, it's, it's automatically wired in the back. It's, it's already set up for that. You don't have all these cables floating around. It's just, you just put them in your terminals and bish, bash, bosh, it's, it's sorted. That'd be too easy though, wouldn't it? You'd be gutted if somebody comes if out. If I that find out you paint it, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Eureka, we've got an idea. I was uh, in Spain recently and I noticed that a lot of their stuff in their consumer units is all double pole. And you sort of think of all the, you know, the other countries, uh, they're sort of like behind the UK. And a lot of stuff they do was a bit weird, but. It made me think, oh, that's not a bad shout. I mean, I suppose with RCPOs, they are double pole now, but when you isolate a circuit and you lock it off, you've still got the neutral in the back of the switch. Yeah. Or the back of the socket. You haven't completely isolated it. If there was a problem, I'd say there's like no bonding or something like that, and neutral went down in the street, you'd, you'd just as, you know, you could, you're at risk of something going wrong. But as, if you was in another country and you everything was double pole, as soon as you turn that breaker off, that circuit you're working on is safe as ours is. 
it's like our fault detection devices coming in, in this country when they've been widespread in places like America and Germany for ages. We feel like we're keeping up with technology and we're not fitting them yet. Well, yet they're almost standard practice across. They are. Yeah, yeah I chatted to a few people in America and they've, they've had them for years. Yeah, and we're making out we're um, keeping up. Yeah, catching up. Yeah, catching up being better, yeah. Nearly there, guys. One more CPC to go. Because all these breakers aren't in, it's so much easier to get my hand in and just make sure everything's in there nice and tidy. I know a lot of people will test all their cabling before they stick it in. I see that on a few videos. Someone will sit there, they'll test their ring mains and they'll get their, all their dead readings and then they'll stick it all in the board. But I like to think, you know what, when the next guy comes along, he has to do an ICR. He, ain't, he hasn't got that sort of uh, pleasure of doing that. I might as well get everything as a finished result and then I test it because it's quite easy. I could get two rings mixed up or get a couple of legs on a ring mixed up in the neutral and I'd never know. But if I'm testing it after I've stuck it in and I'm only disconnecting those two, I'd, I'd know there and then that I've got them the wrong way around. If I test them when they're all out here and then I start sticking them in, you know, then I could have made a, a mistake. And no one's going to know for 10 years. <laughs> oh. Should I see that one? If this gets any hits, one expert, give me some free days. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I said, if this gets any hits, I expect something in the post from Wirex. I would imagine how to connect yeah. up a consumer unit masterclass by Luke Wichard, my trusted oh, electrician, as a title. Might get a few hits. I didn't think of that before we started recording it. Oh, yeah. So, so Gary, if you can just uh, sort of copy over this after and edit it so it clicks every time I do this screw up I'll be right every minute my talk settings yeah Joe, Joe in defense of, of Luke this, this consumer has been used many times and what we're finding is obviously the distribution boards are designed to be installed once tested um, you know intervals of 10 years and undone those terminations where this board's been yeah. on off on off on off on off I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm not particularly happy with this torque driver I, I have struggled I don't find that the ends fit very well in the um, in the terminals, but it's something you can't really test when you buy them because you don't tend to have a fuse board in your back pocket. So I'm just sort of making buy of what I've got, but I probably will be purchasing a new Torx screwdriver set soon. I think where is it? Where where we are and we heard good things that they've got some decent ones. Yeah. Yeah, so right. I might ask around and if they're any good, I, I might sort of upgrade this and just keep this as a spare. Cool. So we're going to stop at this stage here, give uh, yeah. Luke a little bit of a break so we can have our students come in and look at actually what the CPCs look like at this stage. As you can see, it's not as scary anymore. All I've got now are my line conductors. They're the ones that have been left with the labels on. I'm going to lift them up, put my, my gubbins back in again, slide it under there, slide it under there, get in there. Put it on that, put it on that. There's going to be a lot of things you're going to come up against and you're going to struggle to do things because you're, you're too scared to take things apart to make your life a little bit easier. Sometimes you're like, you need to sort of look at it from an outside perspective and think, you know, if I took this off or did that, it'd make the rest of the job a lot quicker and easier. Now I've, that is the correct terminal. No, it's not. This is. No, he's not. All right, so let's make sure we get our RCDs the right way. Well, it's not going to be turning on. All right, you go over to there and you go over to there. Now I'm doing my MCBs. Obviously a different torque setting. I believe, I've not got the manufacturer's instructions here, but 
believe it's two point. Is it two point three? We're going. Yeah, we'll go with two point three. We're going to go for two point three again because uh, you know, in Luke's defence, because the amount of times these circuit breakers have been fitted here at college, I tend to ask my learners to drop them to two newtons uh, of meters of torque because they're going to go in, go out, go in, go out. So we, we Shake tend them to about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, again, if, if, if you're finding the heads are ruined or not as, as fresh as they should be, feel free just to drop that down. It's the principal layout we're looking for in this video presentation and the expectation that we put it to the manufacturer's requirement for the uh, Newton meters of torque in each position. Yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna to have to try and dress these in in such a manner that they look neat. So, I mean, again, there's no right or wrong, it's just, Every board I do normally looks different anyway. It depends where I put the cables in. So I have a little think about it. I'm probably just going to go straight down with them, leave a little bit of slack behind the brake, and then I might sort of curl it in. Uh, I might bring them all in from the same side. So got me circuit one there, it's my ring. So I'm going to tuck him down, straighten that up, come behind these. Once you, because you've got a bit of slack, you can always hide the bit you don't want people to see behind the breakers. So what I'll probably do, I'll just make it that long. And then when you do these, these are actually quite probably the easiest part because nothing has to be the same length. You can just hide the slack. You know, they just took Gary's head off then. this before in the past and I've not looked at this side of the cutters and as I've done that to fold that over I've ended up cutting something extremely short. Alright, bring him in. Make sure, I don't know if you can see this, that you can see you can just about see as where the copper goes in because I've seen in the past someone's tightened it up and they've, they've just pinched the sleeve in and it's not made a very good connection on the conductor. So Welcome can, to this college. You yeah. see it in every light switch, every socket and every consumer unit. Be careful. Careful. Do you put them side by side, front to back, flat side in, flat side out? Is there a special way? Because you've got two, two conductors there for the ring final circuit. You put them side in. I front to back. What you mean, like what in here? Yeah, I put them side by side. Side by side. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Is there a way you? Yeah, do I would go side by side. That's what the way I do it. So. Yeah. I'd probably be scared if those in front of one another. If they was to sort of, one was to fall past the other one day, then the, it's obviously not been up, done up tight enough. There'd be a, there'd be a gap. It, it wouldn't have been. There, there's nothing that can happen with this. I can wiggle it to, to high hell, and it's nothing's going to happen. It's going to always be that taut. If one was in front of the other, obviously it it would be twice the thickness. If, I don't know if I can describe this in words, but if one was to fall past the other, it wouldn't be making a connection anymore. I think side by side also means you can land neatly like you've done as well, so you've got That's to match it, yeah. side by side. It's all about neatness, isn't it? All right, I've got a radial. Again, tuck him down there. Down the back. Down the back, hide the slack. Do you know what? Yeah, come on, let's go down there. Like I said, not every single one of my boards is the same, so you just got to sort of judge everything on what's going to look neat and what's not going to look neat. Nah, hang on. I hope you're good at editing film, Gary. <laughs> I'm going to go through here. We're going for the raw footage. <laughs> All right, down there. We got to remember, Luke. We're probably at about 35 minutes. If people are still here, they're loving it, so it's fine. So we're all good for that. All right. What I'm going to probably do at the end is I'm just going to tuck a load of this slack away, but I'm just going to get them in for now. There's nothing wrong with having too much slack. It makes it easier for the next guy. Use terminal three. The 
And on a four, there he is, through the tunnel. It's like tying your shoelaces, isn't it? Not much trolling they'll be on this. One more. Through the tunnel. For the learner centers we're looking at it the right hand rc cb that we're currently working for the circuits for this is where luke suggested that we were mixing a ring forum circuit say from downstairs with a lighting circuit from upstairs so in the event of losing an rcd or an rc cb in this case that we're only going to lose part of the electrical circuits in the location you're in so you might have the sockets in your area go off but the lights are on or you might have the lights go off in your area but the sockets go on meaning that if you lost power in the dark that things that give residual light out, such as TVs and computer screens and monitors, will help you. You won't be plunged into complete darkness um, when you've lost that circuit. All right, so they're all in. I'm going to tuck a load of this slack down the back. Slack down the back. If I can get my hand in. Try and neaten that up a little bit. Have some sort of uniform going on. All right, so I have more coming up from that spot. So that's one side done, he says. Let's do the other side of the RCD. I better remember to do up those, uh, those bus bar terminals as well. Down the back, spin him round, come about there. So if you think of Luke's normal working day, so it's okay standing here doing a consumer exchange. The phone's like to, to have rang five or six times with people with other, other issues and other problems. You know, the customer's gonna be walking in and out asking when do you think the power will be back on, etc. cetera. You know, and there's a lot to think about. You know, there he said, has he checked that the bottom buzz bar's been tightened up? We're checking torque settings. We've obviously got a lot of things going on at once, yeah? A lot of information to take on board. So it's critical that you remember each stage that you've completed and you've completed all the stages. No point in getting home at night, waking up in the middle of the night after you think you've left the customer's house thinking, have I done this or have I done that? There's no returning perhaps the following day. You've got to make sure that you've completed all the elements correctly before you leave the installation. And remember, as well, once you turn the power off, there's no cups of tea. Because the kettle doesn't work. When's the Wi Fi coming back on? <laughs> guys a couple more circuits all right radials are sharing a breaker I'll cut them to the same length
what's nice for me learners is next year we're actually going to every learner is going to fit one of these consumer units in the opening couple of weeks so i'm just going to hit play and then just sit back okay you're all just going to jog on with connecting one up i think, I that think you a good should idea. do it underneath some stairs as well not in a bay you should make like a little box from to do it in Aren't you glad you got me as a lecturer now, yeah? See what Luke wants to do in a cupboard. No light in there, you got That's a torch it, yeah. on. So a few spider webs. Do you know in hindsight now, because that 16 was in there, I could have um I could put one in the 16, can I? That's fine. No, we'll go, we'll stick we'll stick with the programme. That's, that's, yeah, that's I'm not good. going to though, because I don't know which one's which over here. <laughs> Final one? Final one. Set the fireworks off. The thing Luke can't see is actually we've got this on the big screen and all our learners are actually watching oh, really? on the big it's screen. It looks, it looks sensational, lads. And it don't have to speak, but just nod your head. But it looks sensational on that big screen. Some of them I like to stick my finger in there, well I make sure it's not on, and just make them all that that height, or whatever tool you've got available, which is a certain height. And then you get nice little rings on them. Just tuck all the slack in there that you don't need. Just keep all that together. Left, they'll have to do. Not going to win any prizes, but 